When it comes to new releases, things have been pretty slow so far in 2021. Like, yeah, we've had a few solid games come out. There was that Viking-themed survival game Valheim, which we got in early February. And even though that's an early access title, it's actually been one of my most played games so far this year. And I loved every minute of it. This thing was fantastic. Uh, and then recently, of course, we had the release of Outriders, which has also been fun. Uh, I'm currently chipping away at the end game, unlocking higher challenge tiers, and making my way slowly to the eye of the storm. The gameplay feels great, the loot is interesting, and it's been fun tinkering around with different builds. Uh, Outriders isn't perfect, far from it, but I've enjoyed my time with it. And then also recently we saw the uh, launch of Monster Hunter Rise, which also looks fantastic, but I unfortunately don't own a Switch, so I haven't played it myself. I've heard good things from people I know though, and I really liked Monster Hunter World, so I'm sure I would have enjoyed Rise as well. But beyond that, uh, things have been a little quiet, and as of now we're about halfway through the month of April. So what's going on? Well, pr pretty much the issue is that every single thing is getting delayed. It, it seems like we can't go a week without some major new upcoming game getting pushed back. Lord of the Rings Gollum, Hogwarts Legacy, Deathloop, Dying Light 2, Back for Blood, Gotham Knights, New World, Returnal, Bloodlines 2, The Sand of Time remake, Guilty Gear Strive, Gran Turismo 7. Those are just some of the bigger names that I could come up with that had a planned release date that got pushed back so far this year. Now, this isn't surprising with all of these major studios uh, being forced to work from home over the course of this last year. This is going to put a major hurdle in terms of trying to finish a game. And as such, yeah, 2021 has been, uh, well, let's just call it a slower year thus far, but things aren't as grim as they might seem. There's actually quite a few good looking games that are still scheduled to release. In fact, a few games from that delay list uh, are actually still planned to come out in 2021 so long as they don't get delayed again. So yeah, what we're going to do here today is check out some of the best games that are still coming in 2021. But before we get into the list, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Undawn, an upcoming survival game set in an apocalyptic universe that combines RPG, shooting, crafting, and survival mechanics in an open world. Some of the game's features include a AAA standard open world with a huge boundless map, dynamic storyline, and fortified point system, there's crafting, where you can build your own home and interact with other players using real-time map streaming. Survival elements as you collect various resources in this realistic natural habitat and ecosystem. And it offers a first-in-class combat experience with AAA console standard shooting on mobile platforms. In Adon, you'll get to explore a modern, realistic wasteland with an artful style, dynamic storyline, interactive gameplay, all as you attempt to survive this apocalyptic setting using your skills and in-game resources resources to thrive. So if you'd like to learn more about the game, go ahead and click on the link in the description below. They'll also be keeping everyone up to date on their upcoming launch through their various social media platforms if you want to check those out. And hey, why don't you do me a favor and let me know in the comments section below what you think of Undawn. Okay, so we're going to start things off with everything that has a firm launch date. Like they have an actual month and day that these games are coming out. And this list will be happening in order of release. So starting things off in April, we We've got the Near Replicant remaster. This is going to be an updated version of Replicant, the prequel to the critically acclaimed Near Automata. This was previously only available in Japan, and it's finally getting a Western release. But that's not all. There's some pretty big upgrades here. They've, they've done an overhaul to the visuals. They've added a lot of extra dialogue, and they've also improved the combat to put it more in line with modern day action games. There'll be light and heavy attacks, combos, specials, dodging and parrying. There's also RPG elements as you can customize your character's magic skills and weapons. They're, the game features just a ton of, you know, third person action RPG goodness. But then there's also things like platforming sections and these bullet help things that you'll go through or various combat puzzles. It's a really uh, unique looking game that I never played the first time around and this might be a good time to finally check it out. Now in terms of the story, the game's protagonist is this young man who lives in a remote village and has to save his sister who fell terminally ill to this thing called the Black Scrawl and he sets out with his grimoire vice, a strange talking tome, to search for these sealed verses. Uh, near, the Near Replicant remaster looks pretty darn good. Uh, next up in April, we have the release of Returnal. This is a third-person roguelike shooter. You have crash-landed in this shape-shifting world and must search through this barren landscape of an ancient civilization for a means to escape. You will fight, die, and be forced to restart the journey over and over again. Now, 
Now, as you progress, every time you die and come back, you'll discover that as the planet changes with each of these cycles, so do the items at your disposal. Every loop is gonna offer this new combination of things, unlocking new strategies and different approaches to combat. Basically, they've took many of the elements from the roguelike genre and just put it into this gorgeous looking 3D world with a big focus on the narrative and the storytelling. Visually, this has to be one of the best looking roguelikes I've ever seen. And in fact, there haven't been a ton of 3D roguelikes. I know Risk of Rain 2 did something like this, but boy, oh boy, in terms of the presentation, Returnal looks fantastic. I would say the biggest bummer for Returnal is that as of now, it is a PlayStation exclusive, so it's not coming to any other consoles. It's not coming to PC. This may change in the future. We've been seeing a lot of PlayStation exclusives make their way over to computers at the very least, and hopefully that happens with Returnal. Okay, so that's it for April. Now we move into May, and the first release of that month is going to be Resident Evil Village, the eighth major installment in the franchise. This features the large lady that everyone's just been going gaga over. I can see it. I get it. <laughs> um, this is set a few years after the events of RE7, with an all-new storyline featuring Ethan Winters, who will be playing as in first person, so this will be a first person Resident Evil game. Chris Redfield will be making a return, but this time, rather than being his typical role of a hero, he is shrouded with these sinister motives. There will be a host of brand new enemies to combat inhabiting village that will be relentlessly hunting Ethan and trying to hinder his every move as he attempts to make sense of this brand new nightmare he finds himself in. Every single thing I've seen so far about Resident Evil Village looks just absolutely terrifying. I haven't played horror games in a long time. I maybe, I don't know, I don't have the stomach for them anymore. I mean, this looks good, but bad at the same time, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It looks like a good experience, but a bad experience. Anyways, uh, moving on in May, we also have the release of Hood Outlaws and Legends. I actually just made a whole dedicated video about this game. This is a multiplayer PvPVE heist game where you gather this team of outlaws and attempt to steal treasure from heavily guarded strongholds. So the game will combine elements of heist games with this action combat, third person action combat in a dark medieval setting that is all inspired by the tales of Robin Hood. So two teams of four players will be competing to execute the perfect heist on these various large scale maps with multiple pathways and points of entries. And all of this will be patrolled by these deadly AI guards. You'll get to play as one of the four classes with their own unique skills, mystical abilities, and just their own play styles and choose whether you want to try to stay in stealth and take the treasure unseen or just go in kicking down doors and dominating with brutal combat. Uh, the, yeah, I just have to beat the other team to the treasure and escape to win the match. Now, this is a multiplayer only game. Fortunately, the price does reflect it. I believe it was $30 uh, for this one. So pretty good. It looks interesting. These kind of games can be tough to sustain if they don't just attract a following and get a large player base to keep this multiplayer only experience rolling. But I, I think the game looks good. So hopefully this one ends up holding up. Also in May, we've got Mass Effect Legendary Edition. So this includes the single player base content and over 40 DLCs from Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2, and Mass Effect 3. Along with that, there are all the promotional weapons, armors, and packs in this edition. All of this remastered in 4K Ultra HD with enhanced performance and visual improvements on all three games. And this includes enhanced models, shaders, FX, lighting, depth of field, and full resolution audio. I don't even know what that means, but it's in there. Um, there's gonna be some brand new Shepard customization options. You can uh, choose from improved hair, makeup, and eye color, as well as skin tones to make your Shepard with all the options that were available across the full trilogy, or you can actually choose to play as Fem Shep from Mass Effect 3 in all three of the titles. Some of the gameplay enhancements that are coming to the first Mass Effect game with this trilogy include the improved aiming and weapons balance, uh, improved sound effects, better Mako controls, better input controls, uh, squad behavior, cover behavior, and new gameplay cameras to just be a little bit more smoother and more modern. Uh, obviously, also, your choices will be seamlessly traveling from one game to the next as you progress through the trilogy. From everything they're saying, this is going to be the premier way to play Mass Effect. And I don't know that I played all three games. I know I played one a little bit. I know I definitely played three. I don't know if I ever touched two, though. This might be a good thing. I also love that, like, it's pretty reasonably priced. I mean, I know they're just re-releases and improved versions of old games, but the whole package was like 60 bucks. It's really 
it's not, I don't think that's bad for three games. So that's only if you care to buy remastered versions of games. Um, also in May, May is a pretty busy month here. We're going to see the release of Biomutant. This is that open world post-apocalyptic Kung Fu RPG with this unique martial arts styled combat. Uh, the game looks to have a lot of what you would expect from open world and action RPG games. You can create your own character, which will be some combination of these various uh, furry creatures, rabbits, raccoons, squirrels, pandas, rodents, whatever. Uh, you can choose a class that will be similar to a lot of RPG roles, but with this biomutant twist, like there's the Psy Freak, which is the magic user, the commando, an aggressive fighter, uh, and all of this will dictate kind of your starter weapon and gear, but then you choose to evolve uh, from there. Basically, as you progress throughout the game, you'll unlock access to brand new combat styles as you defeat certain enemies, complete objectives, or just learn from Wushu masters within the universe. The combat itself is heavily martial arts inspired, like I mentioned. They say they aim to deliver freedom of movement while combining various shooting, melee, and mutant power abilities from your choosing. There's an extensive crafting system as you combine parts of various things you find in the world, making up potentially millions of weapon combinations. And all of this is set in this post-apocalyptic universe. It's a massive world that you're completely free to explore. You can travel by foot, mech, jet ski, air balloons. There's unique mounts. You can paraglide and mountain climb. And all of this will be as you explore this dying wildlands, uh, go into these bunkers and tunnels of this underground network or go up into the mountains or out into the archipelago. It's a really unique sounding game. Pretty, pretty cool looking open world RPG. I've been keeping my eye on this for many years now, and I'm happy to see it's it's finally coming out. All right, now moving on to June, we've got the release of Chivalry 2. This is a multiplayer first person medieval slasher and the sequel to Chivalry Medieval Warfare. That thing launched originally back in 2012. I played the crap out of that thing with my friends. I really loved the first Chivalry. At the time, for me, it was a really novel experience. The kind of central focus of this game, of this uh, series, is this deep melee combat system that's all about giving players a huge range of options to respond in combat. You can adjust your attacks and blocks in real time, precise control of your weapons. There's a large arsenal of weapons to choose from as well, ranging from broadswords to battle axes, longbows, javelins, and much, much more. I think the first game had like over 60 weapons that you could pick from, quite a large arsenal. As you play the game, there's this dynamic objective system as players will move in to batter down gates, raid villages, or storm castles. All of this on these maps, which are just vast and this kind of lush medieval environment. And in this newest game, Chivalry 2, they say they've got this all new combat flow that combines real time strikes and free flowing combo system. But yeah, the first Chivalry was a hell of a lot of fun for me. I really enjoyed my time with it all those years ago, and uh, I'm interested to see uh, what they change up to kind of set Chivalry 2 apart. Also in June, we're going to have the release of D&D Dark Alliance. This is a third person action RPG that tells the tales of the Companions of the Hall. This will be following the events of the Crystal Shard, where these hordes of monsters have invaded Icewind Dale, and you play as these pretty mythical characters trying to defend your world and fight them back. There will be four playable characters, each with their own unique skills and play styles. There's a warrior, barbarian, ranger, and rogue. It's going to have traditional action combat, heavy and light attacks. There's two active skills that you can choose from, a block and dodge, as well as an ultimate ability. And it is a mission-based game. So it's not like this open world or anything. There's going to be 21 total missions at launch. And basically you go into a mission, you move to one combat arena, fight off a bunch of enemies, move to the next arena, so on and so on. And you'll be fighting various types of enemies, solving puzzles, and also taking on bosses. It is also a gear game, so you can collect collect and find various weapons, armors, and trinkets that will enhance your character. And it's also a four player co-op game with the ability to perform combo attacks between the different members of your team. And I think uh, ultimately this is a brand new game for D&D fans to look forward to. I know people are, are really attached to these characters, Drist and uh, Caddy Bree and you know, the other two. <laughs> um, so yeah, it looks cool. Um, I, well, you know what, honestly, it looks like it, it's cool, but it also looks a little, 
Uh, I'm unsure about this one. Like, I made a video as well talking about D&D Dark Alliance, and, you know, I'm always happy to have a new fantasy game to play with rogues and warriors and archers and all that. But something looked a little bit janky about this. I, I'm hoping it turns out better than what the early combat footage uh, led me to believe how it's going to feel to play. Anyway, so let's move on now to August, where the only set release that I thought was worth mentioning was New World. This is coming out at the end of August. Uh, finally, <laughs> after, like, like over a year's worth of delays, they're finally having a, a set scheduled release for New World. And now, of course, this is Amazon's first real attempt at the MMO genre. They've got a slate of other MMOs in the works, but this is their initial shot. And I gotta say, this game had a lot of big question marks and concerns, but boy, oh boy, they have been making massive improvements um, in the months since that preview event that took place in August of 2020. So since then, they've added the new five-player dungeon system known as Expeditions. There's been a wide array of brand new enemy types, but on top of that, improvements to AI, threat systems, just how the monsters interact. They also added a, a brand new affix system for elites, and then also a ton of new bosses, which ties directly into the dungeon and expeditions like there will be brand new boss encounters and fights for us to deal with there's been a handful of brand new weapons added to the game with this of course they each have their brand new skill lines which are kind of like adding new classes to the game that's one way to look at it they also did a total overhaul to every existing weapon in the game drastically changing them up and just trying to differentiate the different weapons strengths and weaknesses they added a new smaller scale pvp mode to add as a complement to the 50 versus 50 war system that was in the game Game. There's been um, either two or three brand new end game zones added. So new areas to explore. Again, new enemies within those areas. They added a fishing system, which is kind of just like a fun new uh, resource collection mini game, as well as a ton of different quality of life improvements. They've been making consistent improvements to the combat system. They've just been changing so damn much. So initially, you know, I was excited for New World. The game changed throughout development. I was still cautiously optimistic. It's a it's a new MMO with a AAA budget. So that in of itself is going to have me interested but boy they've been they've been listening a lot to community feedback and making a lot of adjustments so i think this is definitely for mmo fans this is the big release uh in the genre coming out this year that you should be paying attention to because it's the only new mmo as far as we know fully launching this year now moving on to september we're going to see the release of death loop this is a brand new fps from arcane the team behind dishonored and the game's central premise is that there are these two rival assassins that that are trapped in a time loop repeating the same day over and over and over again and the whole goal to end the cycle is, is you have to take out these eight key targets on this island before the day fully resets so really interesting concept here i can see them pulling from some of the things that they did with dishonored so every every time you play you're going to learn from the cycle you can try new paths gather new information find new weapons and abilities to help you break the loop as you try to kind of hone in your play session to get the perfect loop to take out those eight key targets. And something else that's really cool here is there is an element of multiplayer. So in the main story, you will play as the character Colt as you hunt down your targets across the island to break the loop. And all the while, you're being hunted down by the rival assassin, Juliana. Now, what's interesting though, is that Juliana can be controlled by another player, or you yourself can play as Juliana and invade someone else's campaign. Now, they have said that the multiplayer experience is completely optional. Players are gonna have to opt in to whether or not they play as Juliana or can get invaded by another player, which I take it to mean a lot of people will opt out of it so they don't deal with the hassle of getting ganked by other people. I almost wish it was just baked in by default as, as the experience that you have to deal with other people. Kind of like like how Dark Souls does the, the uh, soul invasion system, although I guess that's optional as well. But anyways, regardless, uh, this is a really cool sounding premise for a game. I've liked what I've seen of it. Really, really interesting. This was one of those games that got a delay, but again, the delayed date is still coming out this year, uh, launching this one on September the 14th. Now moving on to October, we've got the release of Back 4 Blood. This is a four-player co-op first-person shooter from the creators of the Left 4 Dead franchise. So there's going to be a cooperative campaign as you fight your way through a dynamic, perilous world where you must work together to survive increasingly challenging missions. You can play with up to three of your friends online or go solo and lead a team of AI teammates into battle. You'll get to choose from eight customizable cleaners and a range of lethal weapons and items. There is also going to be competitive multiplayer 
multiplayer. You can play with or against friends in PvP, switching between playing as a cleaner with special perks, or you can play as the horrific Ridden, which is like their version of zombies, basically. Uh, both sides will come with their own unique weapons, abilities, and specialties. And they say this one will feature extreme replayability even beyond the traditional Left 4 Dead franchise, thanks to this new rogue light card system that will create different experiences each and every time you play, putting you in control to craft these custom decks and roll different builds and undertake more demanding fights. And then there's also the game director constantly adjusting to the player's action, ensuring that there's exciting fights whenever you play. The better you play, the harder it gets, essentially, is how that's going to work. And yeah, I mean, for Left 4 Dead fans, Back for Blood is like, this is the game you've been waiting for, right? Basically, they've, they've broken away from the Left 4 Dead franchise and IP, but they're basically delivering a modernized version of that experience, which again, pretty exciting for fans of um, Left 4 Dead. So those are all the games as of now with firm release dates. Now, there are some games on this list that are still planned to come out in 2021, but they don't have set dates. And that includes Ghostwire Tokyo, Halo Infinite, Elden Ring, Far Cry 6, God of War Ragnarok, Rainbow Six Parasite, Horizon Forbidden West, Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, and Dying Light 2. Some of those games, a little questionable as to whether or not they're gonna come in 2021, but again, they as of now, these haven't been delayed. I would say, there's a decent chance uh, a third to half of that small list I just gave you gets delayed in 2022. I'm just saying nothing's been confirmed. But I guess the good thing to know as of now is, you know, we're midway through April at this point. We're going to get a lot more solidified as we get closer to the summer. You know, there's going to be new game announcements. We're going to have a digital version of E3 is taking place. That's been confirmed. More and more big budget games are going to get announced and revealed that didn't make this list just because as of now they're not confirmed so i'm not going to talk about them but you you, you know you know time will pass and things will change okay there there you go um but that's pretty much it for this list i think that'll do it uh these are the 20 biggest upcoming games still scheduled for 2021 a little over half of them have set dates the rest of them a little more questionable but i worth mentioning and uh, hopefully they do come out so yeah there you go uh it's been slow this year but i think we're still gonna get some pretty good stuff i'm looking forward to a good portion of what's on this list here and i'm um, hoping to jump in and check this stuff out all right thank you guys for watching hope you enjoy the video and i'll see you in the next one take it easy